Chapter 6 Joe Mom is parked at the curb, waiting in her car when school lets out. Her old parking sticker from Mercy Hospital is still stuck to the windshield. She used to be a nurse there, but she and a bunch of other nurses got laid off right before Christmas last year. After that, everything changed. None of the other hospitals around here were hiring nurses, so Mom had to go on unemployment, and Dad took a job driving a truck route because it paid more than he was making at his old job at Walmart. At the end of August, when Mom found out Einstein was looking for a new lunch monitor, she applied for the job without even asking me first. Hop in, she tells me now, leaning out of the window. No, I answer, too mad to even look at her. I'm sorry, Joe, she says. It was an accident, force of habit. Would a slice of pizza help make you up for it? I shake my head. She broke her promise, big time. A million slices of pizza isn't going to make up for that. Hop in, she says again. No, I tell her, I'm walking home. Walking helps me think. Not that I really want to think about all that crummy stuff that happened today. Is it possible to have the, a worst first day of school? After my mom drives away, I hear someone calling my name. Joe! I turn around and see Mr. Barnes hurrying to catch up. I was hoping I might run into you, he says. How did it go today? I feel something hard swell up in my throat. <clears throat> and for a minute, I'm scared I might start crying. But I swallow a couple times and the feeling goes away. It was okay, I guess, I tell him. How do you like Mrs. Beam? He asks. I shrug. She's shorter than me, I say. Mr. Barnes laughs and pulls a pack of sugarless gum out of his pocket. He offers me a piece, but I shake my head. Sugarless gum gives me a headache. How's our old friend, Mr. Samreen, doing this year? I think about the name Dylan called Mr. Barnes behind his back the day I brought his pink hacky sack to school. A word my mother would wash my mouth out with soap for saying. He's not my friend, I said. And no offense, but I don't think he's your friend either. The world is full of Dylan Samreens, Joe, Mr. Barnes says, unwrapping a piece of gum and putting it in his mouth. The trick is not to let them get to you. I wonder if Mr. Barnes has ever seen the look on the face of a zebra who's just stepped into a crocodile's mouth. Thanks for the advice, I say. If you want, I can write it down for you, Mr. Barnes says, pulling out a pen from his pocket. The hard thing swells up in my throat again. Mr. Barnes knows I have trouble remembering things unless they're written down. That's okay, I tell him. And by the way, I like your new tie. I wonder if anyone in Mr. Bar Barnes's class this year will memorize his ties the way I did. Mr. Barnes looks at his watch. He says he's sorry he has to run to a faculty meeting, but that I should feel free to stop by his room anytime to chat. Hang in there, Joe, he tells me as he walks away. My stomach grumbles. I haven't eaten anything since lunch. I think about my mother's offer to take me out for pizza, and I get mad at her all over again. How could she do that? Blow a kiss, blow me a kiss right in front of everyone. What part of no corny, mo corny mom stuff does she not understand? Normally, it takes me half an hour to walk home, but I'm not in any hurry today. Maya, my dog, is waiting for me at the door when I finally get there. She's so happy to see me, she falls all over herself, wagging her tail and trying to lick my face. Cut it out, Mimi, I laugh, pushing her away. Your breath smells like liver. Mom has been waiting for me, too. One of her cooking magazines is laying open on the couch next to her. I can tell she's been crying because her nose is red. What took you so long, Joey, she asks. I was beginning to worry. Can we talk? I don't want to talk, I say. I go into the kitchen, grab a couple of oatmeal cookies out of the jar on the counter, and pour myself a big glass of milk. Maya follows me upstairs to my room. I take off my sweatshirt, toss it on the floor, and shut the door. I'm starving, but I'd rather skip dinner than have to sit across the table from Mom after what she did.